tigers are such interesting, complex animals. There's so many intricate sort of layers in the series of how you get from the input of an amplifier to the speaker. This is the JMod 100 amplifier that I designed with Paul Smith and Doug Sewell over at PRS. This is the result of a lot of guess and check, a lot of really kind of searching what is my sound? What, what are the elements of all these amplifiers that I own that should be chosen to go together into one amp and have this really distinct voice? Paul and I have had a really fun and challenging, but really fun uh, process. I will come to him with this uh, slightly abstract request. I'll say something like, well, the amp doesn't bounce back fast enough. And Paul has learned my vocabulary to a certain extent to where he can understand what that means on a technical level and then go to the circuit itself and make changes. We worked really hard to get the amp that is the amalgam of all the amps I've loved. That's what I need, ultimately, for playing seven records worth of music and four or five different styles. Um, I don't want to have to be switching between a whole bunch of amps. This is a single channel amp that has a lot of different sort of spirits in it at the same time. So you've got that boutique-y, loud, harmonically rich thing, which is in that, you know. But it's also got this sensitive thing, you know. So when you're at low volumes, it still plays in this sort of tube amp, sort of blackface sort of tube amp way. So it really is an amp that does the work of so many amps. One of those X factors that guitar players have, to, have worked to figure out, well, why does this amp, why do, why do I play better on this amp than that amp? And I think a lot of it has to do with just the percussiveness of an amp's sort of uh, ability to kind of accept the note, put it out, and be ready for the next one. It's how you can do the... Even just down to... It's, it's so there, it's so responsive and snappy. It's incredible. We also were able to get an effects loop into the amp that doesn't affect the tone of the amp when it's switched in at all. A lot of amps, when you switch the effects loop on, even if you don't have anything in it, you can hear the sort of dip the amp takes. And Paul and Doug worked really hard on getting an effects loop circuit that doesn't change the tone of the amp at all when it's in. When you click in the overdrive, cir overdrive circuit, it's not the tube screamer sound that you get off of a pedal. It's a really full-bodied, almost like a Marshall stack sound. So you can get into like... <laughs> aspect of this is really interesting. I'm a reverb guy. I love reverb inside of amps, but on this amp we decided not to have a reverb tray. Digital reverbs have gotten so good and so small that I just add it to the effects loop now and it becomes the reverb for the amp and it sounds almost as convincing as a spring reverb, but you're also able to get any other kind of reverb that you want. You can put studio grade reverbs into the amp. Every guitar player knows the feeling of plugging into an amp and beginning to play live over a band and realizing from the moment that they started to hit the strings that this is going to be awesome. And when the tone is there, your playing opens up. Your playing becomes really open and expressive. It's just this other presence to, to the amp. And I feel like it's a real evolution and a step forward in guitar amps.